Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today on April 4th for the Carlson Fundamentals Point Menu Tools and Tips webinar. Um, we're here with Aaron Newman, who is a Carlson Regional Sales Manager. Um, if you have any questions during the webinar, please type them into the toolbar on your webinar screen. And as always, um, there'll be a recording up on our YouTube channel um, about an hour after this webinar has ended. So let me hand it over to Aaron and he can get things started. All right, so hopefully everyone is seeing my screen. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining in today. And we're going to touch on some, some routines that can be very helpful, um, that can also be kind of hidden that you may or may not be aware of. Um, the first one that I'll touch on is going to be search publish control. And what, uh, what this routine can do, if you are going out into a new area or for that matter, even if you have a drawing, kind of like what I have on the screen here, that may be in state plain, um, and maybe you want to find control around that area that you can utilize to set up on and, and pull off of, um, and maybe even bring in some of your own control in closer, then this tool can be very helpful for finding that information. Um, now, what uh, what I do have is a drawing that is in a state plane coordinate system. So it doesn't matter if you have one or if you don't, if you're just going out to a new area, then you can still utilize this, this routine. So the, the routine is kind of buried, um, but if you look under our points pull down menu, then we can go all the way down to the point utilities and there are several different uh, things we can do in here. Now, we're not going to cover every single one of them today, but uh, we can definitely go through and, and familiarize yourself with what is in here. So, the first one at the very top is the search publish control. Um, with this routine, once, once you launch it, then it's going to bring up a dialog in here, which I'll blow up, make it bigger so you can see it. Um, now, this is going to let you zoom into an area. Now, a little trick on this is if you hold your shift button down on your keyboard, then you can uh, use your left mouse click to help zoom in tighter um, without having to just use your roll bar and uh, get you into the area a little bit quicker and easier. So, we can keep zooming in until we find the area that we want to be. And Let's see here. I need to be find out. Okay, there I am. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer in here. And the area that, that this drawing is, just to show you where it pops up at, is actually going to be right in here. So I'm going to get in a little bit tighter. And the the thing about it is you can pick a bigger area if you want to but keep in mind that if you do pick a larger area then it may it, it might take longer for the software to go through and pick out every control that's ever been registered with the state for that particular area so once i have my area defined then over on the left hand side there's a little button and it'll say search for control so I'm going to click that and let it do its work. Down at the bottom, you'll see it's contacting the host, um, and it will display all the different control that's been registered with the state that, that's actually here. So once you've done that, you can find the different points in your area that you would like to use, and you simply just click on those. Um, it tells you an identifier and what it is. So once we click on the actual link in that, then it switches over, it takes you over here, and it gives you the NGS data sheet on it, which you could go through and look at it, see when was it set, the information on it, where it is, um, and, and, and you'll actually get a uh, location of where it's found and different things. Now we can go back to the top left, back to the map, 
and then we can pull in whichever control we want to pull in. So we'll select a few of these and just show you what we can do with this. So here's another one here, C326, and we'll select the link and it's going and downloading it from the host. Uh, once again, we have the NGS sheet for that as well. And we'll go and grab uh, another one. Let's see, we might pick um, this one here. And we'll pull that in. And I mean, you can pull in as many of them as you want um, to, to, to try to get a, a good set of control around your project if you would like to. Um, but we, we pulled in three here. We'll, we'll go with that and see what we can get. So once, once I've selected the, the monuments that I want, the, the control information that I want, then I just simply click down at the bottom right um, the OK button. Now, as soon as you click the OK button, it prompts you, do you want to go ahead and put these into a, a coordinate file? Now I have an, I should have shown and I forgot to, I have a coordinate file open. However, there's nothing in it right now. It's a blank coordinate file. So it already knows where it's going to. If it didn't, then it would prompt you to set the coordinate file as well. But I'll click the yes button and now it's obtaining those positions. And not only is it pulling the information off of the NGS data sheets, but it's actually going to populate it into your CRD file. So once it's done that, then we can use those and um, we can go in and see that it's added those stations and I could go in and list the coordinates just from the points and list points routine. And I'll simply tell it to list all of them and say, okay. So here's the information. Now you notice the point number is the same as the NGS sheet number that we were looking at. Um, but you can go in and modify those point numbers if you want to at any time. Um, but it does, it, it has pulled them in with a, a northing and easting and elevation off of them. So we could go back to our points menu and say, well, let's go ahead and draw those into the drawing and see where they fall at. So now there's the points that we've pulled in. We've pulled in this one the FGE 1030. Uh, we've pulled in a D04788 as well as this one that we've picked way out here. So now where does those show up at? If you remember looking on the list, what we can also do um, since this particular drawing is set in the state plane, which even after you pulled the points in, you can just set it up through your settings, drawing setup, and, and set up your projection in your zone. And once you have that set up, then we can go ahead and uh, export this out to a Google Earth file. Now what that's going to allow us to do, um, we can make sure that we, if you didn't have a drawing, you can still utilize the points and make sure you include the selected points with this and we can drape it on Google Earth just to see where they are and try to get a better location of them. So when you send a crew out to the field, it gives them a good idea of where they need to look for uh, when they're gonna go out and find this control. So I go ahead and run the routine, click okay. Um, I'll give it a name. And for this, we'll just call it um, Arkansas. And now I'll select the entities that I want, which I just typed in the word all, or you could window in the whole screen. And what it's going to do is behind the scenes here, we're launching Google Earth and it will allow us to view this information and to get a good picture of where it is. Now you'll also be able to see in reference to the drawing where these were at. So you can see the drawing that comes in. Um, we have the one, the one point that we located up here close to this intersection tells us it's over here on the side, as well as if I scroll back down, you'll see uh, the point that we picked here over towards the uh, median in between that. And we have also, let's see, we picked another one. Yeah, it was up here on this side. So you can get the information off of them and just kind of see where they are. So that way, if you're sending out a crew, 
um, into the field, then that'll give them a good heads up because now you have a picture of where they can at least start to go locate that control to set up on. So this could be very, very helpful if you're even going into a rural area just to see if there's any control where the closest control is to pull off of um, or if even if you were going out to stake out this job and you wanted to find some control that you could come off of in order to bring in maybe control closer to your job. But it's, it's a good routine that we do have and um, it, it can tend to be a little bit hidden in the program so we have a lot of people that may not be aware of that but it, it's a really good source for bringing in control. Um, so with that, I'm just going to go ahead and exit out and not save that KMZ. But so you could utilize that anywhere you wanted to, um, just just by going into the points, point utilities, and then search publish control. Now the next thing I want to look at is just um, elevation for points. Just some routines that a lot of people aren't aware of. So I mean, if you were trying to um, you know, maybe build a surface off of a set of points, but you wanted a, a subsurface, um, a subgrade surface, and so you want to modify the points, um, just dropping everything down either in a, a scale or an absolute value. Then what I'm going to do is switch to another drawing that just has some points in there. So you may or may not have seen this drawing before, but this just has a good set of points that we can work with. I'm, I'm going to look closer at this just little area here so we can show you what we can do with it. Um, the points from 500 to 523, they're all around a 214, 219 elevation. So maybe um, did I know I need to, I mean, for what this is, it's showing it as a building. Uh, maybe if we've got a change and I need to just drop these points down. Uh, we could say, I mean, to show you graphically, I'll, I'll drop them down by 100 just so you can see it really easily. But what we'll do is, again, we're in the points pull down menu. And down in the point utilities, we'll have an elevation for points. So um, when, when we go in to run this routine, you'll have some options on how do you want to make a change. Do you want to do an absolute change? and just set those to a specific elevation or do you want to do a differential change or scale it? Um, what I'll do is I'll do a differential change. We can tell it the range of points that we want or we could even screen pick them. Now in this case, I know I'm going to be dealing with 500 to 523, so I'll just type that in there. Um, now the change that I want, you, you will need to use either a, a minus or, or, or leave the minus off if you're going up or down in the elevation. So in this sense, I'll take it a minus 100 and we'll take all the points and move them down 100 feet from where they are. So once I run that routine, since I told it which points, it's already uh, has done that, um, but I haven't had to select them. Now I could have done screen pick and then selected in and windowed in my area, but I gave it the actual point numbers that I wanted to use. So I just click the okay button and you'll see they automatically change right on the screen to 114. Now, one thing about Carlson is if you realize that sometimes you can have points in a drawing that may not be in a coordinate file, or you could have points in a coordinate file that are not in a drawing. So with this routine, a lot of people might wonder, is it actually changing them in my points list? Which if I go in and look at my uh, list points, I can list out those same points and you can see that yes it's already even changed it into my coordinate file so now we've dropped all these from the 200s down to the 100s all the way down looking in our elevation so it, it actually does make the change in the coordinate file now one area you do have to be careful of to say if, if that's not what I wanted to do then and you can use the undo and we'll go through undo and then now we've gone back to the 214. So it's showing you the the original elevations that we had in the drawing. However, if you do go into your list points now and list the same set of points, they're still showing 
the elevation in the 100s. So just by undoing it, it didn't know if you wanted to change them completely back to the uh, original points. So you've got some options here. Uh, one of the things that we can do is say we want to, going back to point, point utilities, then we can say maybe we want to update our CRD from the drawing. Now when we go through and, and, and update that, um, it tells you what am I looking for. I want to update point number, the elevations, and or the descriptions. Uh, once I once I select that, then it tells me what entities am I looking for, and I'll window in those. And now when I do it, it it's noticing that the points do differ. So the points in the drawing are different from the new points uh, that that we changed. So you have an option here, if I wanted to say I want to keep the other points, then I could type in a new number and tell it to renumber. Um, going from the end of the file, I could tell it to renumber, and once it's seen what I'm doing, I could say, all right, renumber all of them. So now by renumbering all of them, I now have set of points for the lower elevation and a set of points at the original elevation. Now you don't see them right away, however they are there. So if I go back in to draw locate points and just redraw all those, then you're going to see in the area we have points on top of each other. So we have, let's scoot this one out just a little. I should have, there we go. So we have the point 501, which is at 114, and we have the new point uh, 1001, which is at the 214. So it, it allow you to have those on there. Now, if you didn't want those, then um, we could have updated them and keeping them all the same point number, which let me uh, run in through here, and we will set those, let's see. Let's go to here. I'm going to remove those through my edit points. I'm just highlighting all those points. This, this window on my computer is pretty small, so it may be really hard to see, but I'm just taking those new point numbers, starting with point number 1,000, and I'm just going to remove those and get back to, to where I was without them. Um, now, when you do that in the edit points, it does automatically delete them out of the drawing. So we're back to where we just have one set of points that are in there. So at this point, then um, I'm going to go back and, well, I haven't drawn the new ones in there. I'm going to go back and let's see here. Whoops, 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 whoops. Let me try to remember where I had those points at. They are, okay, so they're at the 114. So maybe I wanted those back to where they originally were and I knew that I had them, I had taken them down by 100, then I can easily go back in and move those back up 100 and tell it that I want to do the points 500 through 523. If I did not change this, um, it could be done by a point group, or it could be done by screen selection. But if I did not change that and had that on all, then it's going to change every point in your coordinate file. So you do want to be careful about that. But now these have actually gone back. So now, just kind of going back and showing you, um, if we look back at the same set of points in here, then we're all back to a 219. Now, one side, just for grins to show you. Okay, so now I've taken them back on the screen, back down to the 114, and I want to show you just updating them again um, because they didn't match what was in the coordinate file because all I did was change them in the drawing. So now we're back to here. If I want to, I could just say overwrite uh, with new coordinates or I could just say overwrite all of them. And now by overwriting them, it changes those 
it gets kind of confusing when you're looking at it, but it does change those back in ah uh, what 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 happened here? Should have taken those back. Maybe I forgot to get those up. Let me see. Elevation for points. I need to go there, put them back at 100. Differential 100, 500. Okay, so those are back at 214, and I need to go back in. So now they're back at 214 and 219. All right. All right. So now uh, it's a lot of going back and checking, but I just want to show you. So those are at 214, but yet we're showing 114 on the screen. So if I wanted to update the coordinate file or, and, or update the drawing and override them, oh, I know what I did. Never mind. I messed up. So what I need to do is update my drawing for my coordinate file here. So maybe I want to, uh, I need to go back in and I could set the same range of points. Um, and then I just want to make sure that I get it updated on the screen. Then we can go in and say, okay, and now it's updated these and taking those back up. So, there are just some, some good routines that, that are not found so much or maybe overlooked because they are deeper in, in a menu in here. Um, but there are some, some good routines that you can use in here. So uh, we may not have filled up the complete 30 minutes of it. Looks like we've still got about eight minutes left. So if we want to at this time, um, I'll turn it back over to Lee and we can look at any questions that may have come up and uh, I'd be glad to help answer any of those. Okay, um, we don't have any questions. You must have done too good of a job. Um, we'll okay. wait a couple seconds if someone wants to type one in now. Um, well, and let me, while they're, well, while they're important. thinking of them, yeah, while they're thinking of that, I do want to show something that, that could be helpful that I forgot. So okay. um, in, in our help menu, if you go into our manual, and you look at search publish control. Um, there is a place in here that can tell you the different orders. Because when you saw that, you probably saw the legend and the different orders of what they are. So, and we do have a good a good legend in here telling you what they are. So our triangle, you have horizontal control, the elevation may be unknown. Uh, circle is gonna be good vertical control, benchmark, horizontal position is usually scaled. So we do have some good references in the Carlson help menu, uh, even with some links that can go in and further explain the different control and the different levels of, of what we have. So that, and the, and the stability of those. So that's something I forgot to mention. Okay, um, we don't have any questions. So if you do have questions um, after this webinar has ended, please email them to info at carlsonsw.com. Um, as I said before, you can find this recording of this webinar up on our YouTube page, which is youtube.com slash carlsonsoftware. And please join our next webinar, um, which is on April 11th with a new Serve CE with Bruce Carlson. And you can register up on our website on our homepage at carlsonsw.com. So with that, Aaron, anything else to add? Um, I mean, that's that's probably all I have. I just thank everyone for joining in that did and was able to. And, um, you know, they, these can be some good routines that may be hidden that you could utilize, hopefully. Great. Well, thank you, Aaron, and thanks everyone else for watching, and we'll see you in our next webinar.